The next thing I want to talk about is Packer post processors. And post processors are really just uh, tasks that run after an image is built by a builder. So there's a lot of things we can do. We can upload artifacts. Uh, we can create like custom uh, vagrant boxes. Uh, we can uh, print out a manifest of all of the artifacts that got configured. And if you take a look at the documentation, right, you could see all of the different um, post processors that they support. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the manifest as well as the vagrant post processor. I'm going to show you guys how that works. And as I stated before, the manifest post processor uh, just creates a JSON file with the list of all the artifacts uh, Packer produced during that run. And it's pretty easy to set up. Uh, so you only have to specify a couple of different output, a couple of different parameters, uh, mainly just the output. Uh, so let's get started on that. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new file. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy project two. Uh, so this is just a simple project uh, that we used. And uh, let me rename that to project six. And if you guys forgot what project two was, um, uh, it's basically just the example where we created uh, the uh, uh, the Ubuntu VM with Nginx. So we just installed Nginx. We didn't really do anything else. So it's a pretty simple example. Um, but under provisioners, uh, we're going to pass in the post processors. And once again, this is going to take an array so that we can pass in multiple post processors. And the first type is going to be that manifest type. And we have to specify an output. So what's the file that it's going to generate and where do we want to store it? And so I'm just going to store it uh, under a file called, um, we'll call it output.json. So it's going to get stored in the same folder. However, you can store it in any directory you want, so as long as you provide the correct path to it. So that's our first post processor. The second post processor is going to create a vagrant box for us so that we can use for testing or local development or anything like that. Here we could just do type and then vagrant. Uh, we don't really have to pass in any other options because uh, uh, most of them have default values that we can stick with. But uh, if you ever want to customize any of that, just take a look at the vagrant documentation and you can specify all of these different parameters so that you can get the exact uh, behavior that you're looking for. All right. And so that's all we need, guys. And so let's go up a directory and then go into project six. And now we're just going to do a Packer. Actually, let's save this and let's do a Packer build. And it looks like we ran into an error and that's because this name was already used. So let's rename that. And so I'm just going to call this post processor example. And we'll rerun that again. All right, so now that that's complete, if you take a look at our project six folder, you'll see that we'll have a couple of more extra files that we didn't have before. Uh, so we've got this output.json file. And so that's from the manifest, uh, the manifest uh, post processor. Uh, and so you can see it's gonna have information about the different artifacts that were created. And also if we just kind of drag this out, you'll see that this is the vagrant box that was created for the Amazon um, AWS uh, AMI that we created. So we can use this vagrant box uh, in our local development server or, you know, just for playing around or testing. But, uh, you know, ideally, you know, the main purpose of this video was to show you guys how we can use post processors to perform certain tasks after a build is complete.